Look the time of day, cause I'm What's going on, world? Michael Beasy here coming to you from the Dreamers Corner, episode 25. Ah, uh, yeah, it's going to be a big episode today. A fun-filled show ahead of us. But before I jump into it, y'all know what I need y'all to do? Like, subscribe, share, comment. Please, like, subscribe, share, comment. Thank you, and it is very much appreciated. So... Let's jump into the show. This past Tuesday, Ronda Rousey made her return to ESPN for two sit-down interviews with Golik and Wingo and on first tape. Now, these interviews didn't exactly go as planned. And in the reporter's defense, it has been a while since we've seen Ronda Rousey on ESPN. And it's been a while since somebody's got to actually ask her some real questions. So, so before I keep rambling on, let's check out the first interview with Mike Golick. Let's go back and, and start with when you knew from the, the MMA, when you were done there, when you, when you knew in your mind, I'm not going to fight anymore. I never said that. Ah, so there is a possibility that you could go back in time? There's a possibility that I could go back in time? That's go, your question to me? Go back in time and, and, and fight. Go back in the octagon. I do not have the ability to go back in time, no. No. Would you fight again? I don't know. So that could have went a lot better than it actually did, right? I mean... Time travel, Rhonda. I don't know if Rhonda was just dodging the question or if she really thought that that's what Gold was asking. I mean, sometimes Mike Gold does get a little off track and ask stupid things to people. I, I be sitting there watching him at six o'clock in the morning, like, what are you talking about, dude? No wonder Greenberg left you. But I mean, as a reporter, as a journalist, it is his job to ask those questions, and especially since Rhonda hasn't fought in what has it been two years. Since she get lost that second fight. Anyways, let's move on to the second interview with Max Kellerman on first take. Okay, Rhonda, what they didn't play in that preview that they heard Stephen A. and me talking about you was I said that you were a woman who, through your fighting, when it when you became such a big deal that when you lost, it's like the earth stopped spinning on its axis, and that's the part I chose to focus on after your loss in the W in the UFC. Like, why is everyone talking about? Oh my God, she lost. Is she over it? All these kind of things. When you achieved such heights that one loss, the whole world stopped and noticed it. Why do you think there was a kind of negative backlash to you after the loss? Um. In other words, people, in, in, you must be aware, in the, in the MMA world, there was a lot of talk, well, she was overrated, she was this, she was that, and my point of view was, at the time and remains, that you achieved amazing heights. Almost no one wins forever. Everyone suffers setbacks. But there seemed to be like an unusual amount of negative pushback after your loss. Did you, did you not experience that? I experience a lot of people who quote some people that are really just afraid to state their own opinion. Do you think it's my opinion? That No, that's not my opinion. I can tell you right now. That's not my opinion. I thought you achieved amazing things. I was and am, remain a big fan of your fighting and of you. That's not, that's not me saying some people meaning me. That is me saying I read and heard from others and defended you. Well, thank you for defending me. I appreciate that. Okay. Rhonda. <laughs> so I'm an avid First Take fan. Not going to lie. For the past five years, I've sat down and watched First Take every morning. Max Kellerman joined First Take within the last two years. And what I've noticed about Max is he's not exactly like Skip Bayless used to be, which nobody likes Skip. We all like Shannon. That's a little undisputed promo right there. But... Back to the subject, Max Kellerman likes to ask philosophicalized questions. I mean, he does a lot of research and he puts his research with philosophies that he believes in, that he believes in, and, you know, he can kind of rub people the wrong way with how he asks questions because his questions can be very long in length. 
And I know me, when somebody asks me a question and it's longer than 10 seconds, oh man, I'm done. Hell, longer than five seconds, I, I, okay, man, it's got to be yes or no. You know what I mean? And then I can go in depth for maybe about five, 10 seconds on what you ask me. But if you ask me a question that is 35 seconds long, I'm going to get lost and take offense, especially the certain words and how you ask the question. So I get it. And, you know, like, Rhonda, she went on these shows to plug WrestleMania. But the problem is, nobody's seen her in the last two years. They're going to ask these questions. So, Rhonda, good luck with WrestleMania. I'll be watching, and I hope everybody else will be watching you take on Stephanie McMahon and Triple H as you team up with Kurt Angle. Next up, since Jay-Z and Tidal have basically made it next to impossible for anybody to post anything about Jay-Z on YouTube, myself and the staff here at the Dreamers Corner decided, you know what? We're going to take a chance and do things our own way. If we're not going to be able to play his music, we're at least going to be able to get his message across to everybody out there. Because, I mean, I love Jay-Z. Me and Jay-Z was born on the same day. And yeah, he may have cheated on Beyonce, but shit happens in life when you're rich, I guess. I don't know. I ain't never been rich. So, the first exclusive feature I have for you all today is Jay-Z, Hove himself, reflecting on what it's like to be true to oneself, hip-hop and culture, and its impact on race. Check it out. I think the most important lesson for me would be just be true to yourself. You know, it sounds like a a very simple thing to do, but it's not. It's not simple to do with all the pressures to succeed and all the pressures to, once you succeed, to stay there. You have a belief in yourself, and, some, and sometimes, in most cases, it's almost a naivete about who you are and what you can contribute to, um, to the game. Belief in oneself and knowing who you are, I mean, that's the foundation of everything great. I have a very interesting take on the cultural impact of hip hop, and it's a strong one, you know, so I just want to prepare people for that at home. Um, I think that hip hop has done more for racial relations than most cultural icons, and, and, and I say save Martin Luther King because his dream speech we realized when President Obama got elected. But the impact of the music, you know, this, this music didn't only influence kids from urban areas, it influenced people all around the world. People listened to this music all around the world and took to this music. And racism is taught in the home. I truly believe that racism is taught when you're young. So it's very difficult to teach racism when your kid looks up to Snoop Doggy Dog. And if you look at clubs and how integrated they had become before people partied in separate clubs. There were hip-hop clubs and there were techno clubs and now people party together and, and once you have people partying and dancing and singing along to the same music, then conversations naturally happen after that, right? And then within conversations that we, we all realize that we're more alike than we're separate. I'm not gonna lie, like I thought that was an awesome reflection from Hove. And I love hip-hop. I'm <laughs> just going to be real. Next up, the Final Four is right around the corner. Two days away. Two teams are going to punch their ticket to the Monday night national title game in... What state's that in again, Edward? What, what, what the hell am I paying you for? We don't know what state it's in. But the national title game is going on Monday night. And you know what? We're going to give you all the predictions to it. Check it out. So the first Final Four matchup of the weekend... We we got Michigan versus Loyola, Chicago. This is an exciting game. We got a big dog versus a Cinderella. So, let's jump into it. Basically, I feel like... Okay, let me just put it like this. I've never been one to go against the Holy Ghost or go against a great Cinderella story or even not believe a 98-year-old nun. I mean, the woman has experienced more life and seen more in life than I'll ever be able to fathom. 98 years of it. I'm just at 30. I got 60 more to go. 68 more to go. Told y'all, we ain't good at math here at the Dreamers Corner. However, the clock is going to strike midnight when Loyola Chicago takes the floor against Michigan. Michigan has a really good team all around. They are set up the same way Loyola Chicago is. And Michigan has the X-Factor, Mo Wagner. 
Mo Wagner is like Dirk Nowitzki. Just a younger version. You know, Dirk ain't good no more, but you know how Dirk used to be. Mo Wagner can just shoot over anybody. Dude, he's got the same skills. But I'm going with the upset pick. I'm going with the great story. I'm riding with the Holy Ghost, and I'm jumping on your bandwagon, Sister Jean. And I'm riding with Loyola Chicago with the upset over Michigan. The next Final Four matchup is the Battle of the Titans. We got Kansas versus Villanova. Two great point guards are going to be showcased on Saturday against each other. We got Deontay Graham versus Jalen Brunson. And I'm telling y'all, these dudes are studs. But Kansas has the X-Factor player on their squad, which is Newman, who is averaging over 23 points a game since the Big 12 tournament. This man has stepped it up a notch come tournament time. Winner go home. Newman said, I ain't going home. And you know what? They ain't going home against Villanova. I'm taking Kansas. Being in the national title game Monday night, we're going to have the Kansas Jayhawks versus the Loyola Chicago Ramblers. Yeah, y'all. I just said that. The Loyola Chicago Ramblers and Sister Jean. It's going to be exciting. Bet y'all want to know who I think is going to win that game. But you know what? There's going to be another episode this weekend, and we'll have plenty of time to discuss that national title game. Next up, BZ's Reds. Welcome to BZ's Reds. And today I would like to talk about strippers. This past weekend, I went to the strip club. I love the strip club, you know. It's a fun place for single men in their 30s to go because, well, we're single and we ain't got no women chasing us. Because why? We're single because we're fucking 30 and we're single, so obviously nobody chasing us. So we gotta go to the strip club. I'm sitting there having a good old time, drinking my vodka and Sprite. My, my own fucking business. Actually, I was looking at my phone because I was unimpressed by the bitches. My Indian bitch wasn't there. So, this fine-ass woman walks up to me. I'm not paying any attention. I told y'all, I'm looking at my phone because I'm unimpressed by the bitches. But this bitch, she was fine. And she asked me if I would like a dance. And I simply just said, no. And she gave me the dirtiest look and got so angry at my simple no. And she went to the motherfucking bouncer. And she gets the bouncer and tries to kick me out of the strip club for telling her no. The bouncer looks over and he sees me and he looks at her and he shakes her head, shakes his head like this at her. So long story short, I believe that stripper had a pull up her ass. And I feel as if it's not my fault that I didn't want to dance on the ass. My bad that you bitches ain't cute. And fellas, if you go to the titty bar and the bitches say, do you want to dance? And you don't think that bitch is cute? Do what I didn't say no. Fuck that bitch. Thank y'all for watching the Dreamers Corner. I'm your host, Michael Beasy. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment. Like, subscribe, share, comment. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If y'all got anything y'all need to say to me, say to me. Please, there's a comment box down there. It's there for a reason. You ain't got to like nothing, but at least talk to me, man. I get bored over here sometimes. Edward gets on my damn nerves. What? What? You got something to say, Edward? That's what I thought. Shut up. Anyways, please be careful out there on those streets, y'all. And until next time, ta-ta for now. Time of day.